is um, George Anthony DeVolder. He is a family friend of Mr. Trelha's. Okay, so how do you know this man? <coughs> We're family friends. Our parents know each other. Uh, um, I mean, We've known each other for two years. Lost touch. Got back into touch back in um, yeah. September last year. Yeah. In Orlando, yeah. when I was um, yeah. relocated from New York yeah. for work yeah. into the New Orleans yeah. area. And so, what do you do for work? Um, I'm a politician. I work for Goldman Sachs. You work for Goldman Sachs in New York. Yep. No, he doesn't. We don't play that video just to remind you that even in like official declarations, he was lying about his jobs. That's part of the evidence of what seemed like investigation that just happened in the past, but in theory could come back involving now Representative George Santos. And the crux of it is this 2017 credit card skimming operation in Seattle, which he is now being alleged by an individual to have been a part of, he really did get around. I mean, how he found time balancing that with his championship volleyball career, I don't know. But anyway, a man who was convicted of the fraud that we're talking about here, deported to Brazil for it, said in a sworn declaration that it was George Santos that actually orchestrated the entire thing. This is Gustavo Ribeiro Trelhas, who says, I'm coming forward today to declare that the person in charge of the crime of credit card fraud when I was arrested was George Santos. Anthony DeVolder or both. Santos taught me how to skim card information, how to clone cards. He gave me all the materials and taught me how to put skimming devices and cameras on ATM machines. I'm not I'm not gonna do it. Just say ATM. Sorry. Anyway, uh this is not the bothers me. This isn't the first time that George Santos's name has come up in this case. He was previously questioned about it. And bear in mind that this sworn declaration is coming from a person who was uh convicted of credit card fraud. So if you want to not necessarily trust 100% everything that they say about this, I would understand why you might be, uh, you might have that stance. Brett, what do you think? It's yeah, it's like LCD displays, John. Um, <laughs> oh, I know, I know, it just bothers me. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is this is, it's just a yet another thing that makes me realize that I love George Santos because he really embodies the American ideal of fake it till you get incarcerated. <laughs> um, but if you can get to a point where you are high enough profile in the American storytelling uh, machine, then you can just not go to jail. You cannot suffer the consequences of it. I think it's uh, at a certain point, it reminds me of an old Eddie Izzard bit where he's like, if you kill 10 people, you go, <laughs> you're a monster. But if you kill 100,000 people, you're like, oh, well, he must get up very early in the morning. <laughs> like that's, that's it. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I saw some tweets, I forget who did it. I think it might be El- Ellery Smith or someone who's like, after the credit card scheme, now I like the guy again. <laughs> But unfortunately, he was like uh, skimming uh, individual people's credit card yeah. information. But 100%, which we I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. look, we have other information. I'm not going to go through it. If you want the, the full rundown of the previous investigation, the testimony that he'd given, it, it is available. We'll see. A lot of this stuff could potentially be returned to. I don't know in terms of statute of limitations on this. It wasn't that long ago. I just mostly wanted to talk about this to remind you. I did. A, I put up a video on the damage report TikTok about this. Just to like point out that, and I could be wrong. It's March 10th. Um, George Santos won. His strategy won. He didn't leave. The fact that he was looking like he was being humiliated and he looked like a buffoon turns out isn't fatal. You just don't go, and eventually people move on. Most of the media will move on, and he's still drawing a salary and he's still getting his benefits and he still has an office and on and on and on it goes. He gets to vote on things. We all know that he's one of the biggest liars in American politics ever. And it turns out that that is irrelevant. So that's a fun realization. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.